By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome at another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing with Timmy's Blue, so that's a mono blue deck with four protocol sorcerers. And I'm playing against a mono red deck against Ali from the capital of Egypt. So I guess that refers to uh, Ali from Cairo. Uh, Cairo, Cairo, how, how do I pronounce that? Anyway, it refers to the Arabian Nights card. Uh, it's, it's a red creature and when it comes to the board, if we see it this turn, I'll elaborate on what it does if you're not familiar with the card. Um, now, as you can see, I've, I've had a great start there playing an Ivory Tower and my opponent is playing a Jalum Tome also referred to as the little book. Now I really like this card, it's three mana and you cast it for three and then it has an activation cost of two and it taps and you draw a card but then you have to discard a card. So it's kind of a way to go through your library and to kind of dump the cards that you don't need and find useful cards for them. So quite a nice card, maybe it should see more play in, in certain decks like Weenie decks for instance. And I'm gaining some life uh, from the Ivory Tower already on 26. And also playing a Mace of If. And that's, of course, ideal. I'm playing with four Mace of If. And you're probably thinking, yuck, four Mace of If. I'm doing this because I hardly play with any creatures. And um, I want to counter other spells. Spells that form more of a, a threat than just creatures. So creatures I hope to stop with my Mace of Ifs and... and in this case, I had a Maze of If in my hand, so I countered a Dragon Whelp. And I'm playing a second Ivory Tower here, gaining even more life. And my opponent here is playing a Desert. Very nice card. Desert says, uh, tap one, and it deals one damage to a creature of the opponent, an attacking creature. So actually, it could also be your own creature, I guess. So an attacking creature that has dealt damage to you or to a creature you control. Um... It can also give you a colorless mana, so you can still use it. And it's interesting to see here what my opponent is doing. His graveyard is now filled with two Disharmonies, and Disharmony is a card from Legends. And it's it's quite a cool card. You don't see it often. You play it when your opponent is attacking, and then you can just take one of his creatures and use that as a blocker. So if you play it the right way, you can just kind of kill two birds with one stone. So you can kill uh, two creatures from your opponent. Oh, and oh, almost missing here uh, the Sheevan Dragon. My opponent Ali is trying to cast a Sheevan and I'm playing a counter spell. And as you can see, I've already replaced my life counters there with, um, with some beads. And uh, beads stand for 10 life each. So in this case, I'm on 38 life. So it's going a little crazy here. And I'm just going to adapt the life counter down below to 20 plus or 30 plus or 40 plus. That just makes it easier. And there is Ali from Cairo. So that's uh, the Ali is playing the Ali. And Ali says, while Ali is in play, damage that would uh, reduce you to less than one life lowers you to one life instead. And all further damage is prevented. In other words, as long as Ali from Cairo is on the board, it cannot, you cannot die. So very curious to see um, what his tactic is here. Oh, and this is interesting. He's playing a safe haven. Now, safe haven is a card from the dark. It's a land. It's, again, I feel it's one of those cards that just isn't good enough, but I guess it has potential. Uh, what it does, you can tap it and then you can put a creature in the safe haven. So for instance, if I would target Ali from Cairo, he can say, uh oh, I'm gonna tap my safe haven. Ali from Cairo goes into the safe haven and then he can, I believe, sacrifice his safe haven and the creatures that are in the safe haven are coming back into play. Important here uh, to, to elaborate about the safe haven is that you need to sacrifice, you can only sacrifice during the upkeep. So that obviously that makes safe haven very vulnerable and what we see now here let's get back to the game is a strip mine activation taking away my maze of if and all of a sudden i am very vulnerable and there's five full damage coming in from the dragon whelp so one of the things that i'm going to do now is trying to use my simbad to dig for answers in this case finding another maze of if and that's a nice thing about simbad so i'm finding a library of alexandria not too shabby i mean could be worse and that's what I like so much about, um, you know, having old school and all these uh, special lands. It's quite strong land-wise, uh, the old school format. 
And it means that my Simbad is very valuable because you can just find all these spells. But for now, I haven't uh, found a Maze of If yet. And of course, I'm gaining life from the two Ivory Towers, but Dragon Bulb hitting me for five uh, will become a problem at a certain point. Of course, I've now also found my Library of Alexandria, so that will definitely help me. Another attack in here. And I'm going down here to 48. I'm gaining some life again. <laughs> so I'm at 52. I mean, I'm still pretty good here at 52. So so what? Who, who cares about the Dragon Wall? I'm going to play something for five. I'm playing a pirate ship. Yes. So I've got a pirate ship and I've got Simbat together. How cool is that? So hopefully I can fire off some cannonballs now to my opponent. But I mean, this shows why pirate ship is so mediocre it has three and I'm, I'm digging i think for counter spell here with my library of alexander and not finding it it says it three toughness and why not give it four toughness wizards why not give it four toughness it's already hard enough to play as a four four trust me it won't get overplayed it's not too strong trust me and this is pretty cool he's playing an aladdin an aladdin wow this deck is, is full of flavor aladdin arabian knights card um, you got to pay some mana. I don't know how much actually. Maybe you can let me know in the comments. You can tap and you can take over an artifact. And the cool thing is you don't have to keep Aladdin tapped. You can just untap Aladdin again and steal another artifact. So he can now take my Ivory Tower. So this is not going very well. I need to do something here. And if I would have still had my, my pirate ship, I could have just killed uh, killed his creatures. Oh, and this is interesting. I remember this. I'm actually cloning his Aladdin, thinking, hey, I have two Felwer Stones, so I have red mana. But I'm forgetting one very important detail. And, and Ali is going to show it to me now. So I was actually thinking, copy Ali, being able to steal his my artifacts back that he steals. But what he exactly? He's going to steal my Felwer Stone. So I only have one red mana. And when this happened, I was like, oh, I'm the worst magic player ever and this is actually what happens and maybe you recognize this this is what happens when you're playing against a card that you don't play against often you you know you start making mistakes like this because you don't know the card well enough but luckily for me i'm drawing a prodigal sorcerer so let's hope this prodigal sorcerer stays on the battlefield at least one whole turn maybe i can protect it with counter spells i have a full hand and there's a lightning bolt and there is a spell blast so i'm protecting my protocol sorcerer here and that's very important that's crucial if i want to stay alive and it may sound weird when you're on 70 plus life but if that aladdin remains on the battlefield and steals my artifacts i am nowhere i need those ivory towers And let's see what he is going to do next. And he has that book still, and he's playing a chain lightning, and that book really helps him to find the answers. And it, it's the end of the line for the Protocol Sorcerer. And he's now stealing another Ivory Tower. And I'm now actually regretting not countering the the little book. I'm not sure if I if I had that option when I think back of the of the match, but you can see how good that book is because he's filling his hand with useful spells. So that's why he can find two chain lightnings and a lightning bolt. So even with that counter spell back up, I'm not able to protect my protocol sorcerer. Hopefully I have another one. I'm playing with four. Using my library, I'm digging, I'm drawing a lot of cards here, so that's great. And I'm playing another Prodigal Sorcerer. So my opponent maybe has the small book, but I, of course, have and the Simbat, which I'm not activating at the moment because I don't want to lose any more cards, even though I just did, I think, but I don't think I should in this position. But anyway, uh, and I have Library of Alexandria, of course. Um, so that's great for me. And activating that book again. Look how many activations he's had. And he's throwing away a, mount a mountain. Who cares? He has enough of those. He needs useful stuff. And he's playing a Stone Rain. Nice. On my library of Alexandria. And I really like this. Uh, check out the Black Bordered Stone Rain. It's probably beta. Uh, but how cool. How cool is this deck? 
And I'm wondering what he's going to do now with Aladdin. Um, oh, he cannot activate it anymore. It's not... Because I think it's four to activate Al Aladdin. Four and tap. I think. I'm trying to remember now. Again, it's not a, a card you play often. And he's playing a Fireball of one. Ooh, but I have a Power Sink, so good news for me. So I wonder if he still has a Lightning Bolt. Uh-oh. No, he's not. Oh, he's tapping the mana because of the Power Sink. Okay, so he's tapped out except for the Save Haven. But Save Haven cannot give any land, uh, any mana, by the way. So it's a land, but it doesn't produce any mana. Uh, so it's my turn again. And I'm using the Protocol Sorcerer, obviously. And this is interesting. Now you see the Save Haven in action. So he's using the Save Haven to protect his Aladdin. But his Aladdin is out of the game for now. So that means I'm getting uh, the artifacts back. So that feels really good to having my own artifacts back. So, uh, And I'm playing a clone, I believe, over the uh, Protocol Sorcerer. So this is starting to become like really complicated and i am on 69 life my opponent is st still on 20. i mean we're playing now for what it feels like forever and we're going nowhere and this is really funny and i don't think this is something you expect when you're playing with a mono red deck or against a mono red deck there's a lightning bolt probably trying to kill one of my creatures were counting mana, so I'm probably trying to cast a power sink. And this is a nice um, demonstration of how weak power sink is in the late game. I mean, I would have preferred a spell blast here. Just playing a spell blast for two mana would have kind of saved my uh, protocol sorcerer. But in this case, I only have a power sink, I guess, because I'm counting the mana. And um, it's, it's not helping me here. And remember, as soon as my second Timmy is gone, he's going to use his save haven. So getting rid of the save haven is still important. I believe I still have a strip line somewhere in the deck. Passing turn now. Untapping his mountain. Let's see what he can do. Drawing a card. He still has that little book. So if it's not useful, he can just discard, move on to the next card in the deck and he seems to be taking his time here thinking what to do and first i'm pinging the ali from cairo and he's responding by putting it in the safe haven and he's also attacking with this dragon wall up here for five i don't have a mace of if anymore so i have to take the damage And then it's my go taking life there from the ivory towers going back to 69. So that's just crazy. And this is interesting. So I'm using my two Felwer stones because they're mountains and two colorless mana to take over the little book. And he's drawing a card now. So the last time he can activate it. And I have the book there. And now I'm making a huge, well, huge mistake. I'm making a small mistake here. I'm attacking with the Simbat forgetting about his deserts. So after I've dealt him one whole measly point of damage, he's now down to 19, ladies and gentlemen, I lose my Simbad, a very valuable creature. So um, definitely a misplay, especially since you um, can imagine I can use the Simbad to look for a strip mine that can help me get rid of that horrible safe haven. And of course I can use it to look for Maze of Ifs. Because even though I'm not getting a lot of damage from the Dragon Whelp because I'm gaining life from the tower, it's still damage. And what if he can get a second creature? Maybe he plays with another Sheevan Dragon. And then uh, then the threat is, is far more serious. I have the little book now, so I can go through my cards now as well. Even, although it's still tapped because Ali activated it when I took it over. And I'm playing a control magic. So I'm now basically just stealing everything from him. And again, he's putting it in a safe haven. So you can see how good this, this, this card actually works. So he has everything in his safe haven. So that, that safe haven is getting kind of crowded. They're having a party over there. 
Um, of course, I realized that when I played the Control Magic, I actually don't mind because now it's from the battlefield and I'm not taking any damage anymore. So in a way, it's just a removal spell. And I know that he's not going to use his safe haven as long as I have the uh, the Timmy on the battlefield because he doesn't want to lose his uh, Aladdin or Ali from Cairo. So a very interesting board state here. And it's interesting, another land from the dark there that he just played. I believe that's the City of Shadows. And with the City of Shadows, you can also sacrifice a creature. Um, or also, but you can sacrifice a creature and then um, you gain a mana counter on the City of Shadows. And there he plays a Granite Gargoyle, the 2-2 flyer for 3. And for 1 red mana, you can give it plus 0, plus 1. And there you go, activating the book now for the first time. And I'm actually putting away a Maze of If there. Discarding a Maze of If. Interesting choice. I guess I have so much life, I don't really fear the Granite Gargoyle. And tapping two more mana. And oh, playing a Brain Geyser. Okay. I guess I'm playing it for three. Maybe afraid that I'll have to discard. There's the Simbad again. So it looks like I have complete control of this matchup. And he's on 16. So all I have to do now is just just kill him. But that can go very slow. And also because he has those deserts. So I cannot attack with Aladdin. I cannot attack with Sinbad. And I believe he's asking now how many counter spells do you have in your graveyard? What if you played out? Kind of to have an idea. So I guess he wants to play a spell here. I haven't played out that many counter spells actually. You would imagine so far. Okay, and there it is. He plays a fireball trying to get rid of the Tim. And then, like I said before, he wants to get rid of the Tim first. Uh, before he can, um, before he's gonna sack his safe haven and get his creatures back. And there it is. We talked about it earlier. This Sheevan Dragon. So it's his second Sheevan, and I think this one resolves. Very nice play here because he's kind of forcing me to counter that fireball, and kind of thinking, okay, if I have a chance, then I have a chance now. So he probably doesn't have a second counter spell, or at least chances are slim. And, oh, that's that's just too bad. Okay. I kind of, I, I'm not, I understand what I'm doing here. And this is what you do when you play with four Maze of Hifs. But I can understand if you now go like, oh, yuck. Because, I mean, this beautiful, un unlimited Sheevan Dragon is on the battlefield. And it just wants to attack. So sending back the Sheevan, taking two damage here from the uh, Gargoyle. But it's not really gonna going to hurt me. Still gaining life from the towers. And I mean, look at my life count. It's insane. Pinging him at the end of each turn now. That's kind of the tactic. Hopefully drawing some more clones to uh, to copy the Timmy. And I, I believe in an... I believe I also have a Mahamoti Jin in the deck. But maybe... I don't know. Maybe I've discarded earlier in the game. Like through Simbad, but I'm not sure. I mean, we've been playing for a long time. On here, I'm playing a book to draw even more cards. And I believe it's just important that I keep pinging now. Obviously, he's attacking. I'm taking damage from the Gargoyle, and it's my go again. I believe I'm forgetting to ping here. And he's trying to play a Chain Lightning on my Tim, and I'm playing a Spell Blast here, protecting it. And I'm pinging him at the end. Okay, so I, I remember. That's a good thing because I tend to forget as well. So he's now down on 12. So it seems like we're slowly going towards the end of the game. I don't really see a possibility here for Ali to actually win the game. I have control. Oh, and here, this is the nail in the coffin. I'm playing the strip mine, taking care of his safe haven. So that means he loses all his creatures. And now you can see why safe haven is not a card that you see often. Oh, and to make matters worse, I am playing a control magic over the Sheevan, but he can use the City of Shadows here to sack the Sheevan Dragon. So what I really like about this deck um, that Ali has is he has all these mechanics um, that just don't allow me to control his creatures. And of course he plays that because um, 
he's playing with that uh, legend card that we saw earlier. I kind of forgot the name here, but the ones that he discarded early on in the game. So playing a second Protocol Sorcerer here, so that means the game is going to go really, really fast. And he's asking me to count my cards, and I believe I have like nine cards in uh, in my library. It's not a lot. Oh, no, 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 this is Diamond Valley. And um, I'm just going to pause the game here for a moment to explain to you what Diamond Valley is and what it does, because this is quite crucial for the game. Now, Diamond Valley is a land from the Arabian Nights, and it says tap to sacrifice one of your creatures in exchange for a number of life points equal to its toughness. Note that this ability may be used after blocking has been declared. So you can use this effect as an instant speed, but more importantly it says uh, tap to sacrifice one of your creatures in exchange for a number of life points, and here it comes, equal to its toughness. So this means it could buy him the time he needs um, to kind of see me run out of cards. So let's get back to the game quickly and, and see what he does with this Diamond Valley. And we are back in the game. And I'm doing a damage here with my Timmy. Maybe he doesn't see it. Maybe he's not going to use it. Fingers crossed. I mean, my deck looks very, very slim. I mean, life totals are not really important from my side. And dealing two more damage. So he's going down to eight life, actually. And I believe he's doing it now. So he's tapping all his red mana and he's going to count. And he's sacrificing his granite gargoyle, gaining 10 life. And he's back up to 18 life. So this is extremely frustrating and um, Am I actually going to lose here because of this Diamond Valley and these two Granite Gargoyles? I mean, uh, playing another clone, cloning another Protocol Sorcerer. And I think I am. We're counting cards. I've got four cards left in my library. So I've got four turns to go. I can do three damage per turn, which is not enough. That's 12 damage. He's on 16. And he's got another Granite Gargoyle there that he can sacrifice. So that's another 10 life. I mean, I mean, this is just, this is crazy. I have never played a game where I lost against a Diamond Valley. Well, not in this way, because Diamond Valley is a good card. But this is just, I mean, I, I've, I've had total control. I've had total control. Just exactly what you want to do with this blue deck, total control. But, I mean, it... it it doesn't have a punch. Three cards in my library now. And I'm dealing those three damage. And let's see. He's counting again. Is he going to sack the other Granite Gargoyle? He's, he's counting his, lives, his life. Um, I mean, it's clear. He knows the amount of damage that, that I can do. And I don't think I have anything in my library that can that can save me here. And there's a tap. What is he going to play? Oh, sweet. Oh man, I kind of feel bad for doing this. Playing a power sink here. The Rock Hydra is a very cool card. And I believe that's a beta Rock Hydra. Such a cool card. So I'm just trying to counter here, forcing him to tap out maybe being able to do something still. And he's actually in response, he is sacrificing his granite gargoyle. Why not? So that means he gets another 10 life or so, maybe a little bit less. But after the dust has settled, he's still on 18 life. And um, I'm attacking him now because his deserts are tapped, so I can I can attack him without losing my creatures. Although that doesn't really matter at this stage, it's just... Do as much damage as you can do. And I only have two cards in my library. And he is on 16. And there's, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do. I can deal six more damage in total. Maybe 10 damage. And there's a Rock Hydra. And playing another Power Sink. I'm sorry, Ali. I really love your deck. I love your Rock Hydras. Um, well, I'm actually not sorry because I think you're going to win 
on this Diamond Valley playing a Ghost Ship. Which is a card I really like, and this is a deck of pirates, so I'm playing a ghost ship in here. It's a 2-4 flyer, uh, regenerate for 3, but it's not going to do the amount of damage that I need to do here. He's on 11, so end of turn I can hit him for 3 more, and then he goes down to 8. And there's a Wheel of Fortune, <laughs> I'm actually dead. There's no Oh, I'm not dead, okay, there is a Spell Blast on the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, so the counter spells are actually doing what they're supposed to do, giving me control. This is the last card of my deck. And I'm just attacking with whatever I have here. And he's down on 8. And, oh, this is nice countering. Countering another spell here. So I'm just, my hand is full of counter spells. Uh, killing my two creatures there with the deserts. And he's on 4 life. And he's on 4 life. So he's going to survive his on 4 life. So he only needed one extra turn. If it would have skipped one draw step. Skipped one card, I would have won this game. This is crazy. Congratulations, Ali from the capital of Egypt. Uh, you have won this game, and I have lost this game in, in a fantastic way. So, I mean, it's not bad to lose in this fashion. Losing against a Diamond Valley that eats up massive granite gargoyles that, that are... 10 12 or 10 210 or i mean you know have a huge toughness congratulations uh once again beautiful uh, mono red deck with so many interesting cards that uh, that you hardly ever play again so this was definitely a great game if you'd like to see more old school magic in action you can click on the links that are appearing on the screen right now you can also take a look on the timmy channel i believe we have over 60 videos right now exactly more than 60 old school games you can find for now thank you for watching this episode of timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and see you next time